Welcome to the Gravity Engine 7.0 What's New video. The main feature that I've added in Gravity Engine 7.0 is the ability to produce pork chop plots. For those of you that haven't heard the term before, it's a uh, contour plot uh, or surface plot of the cost associated with an orbital transfer usually in a case between planets which are in different shaped orbits and the orbits are differently inclined. Uh, and so the decision of when to leave and when to arrive is a fairly complicated one. And so if we, for example, go to this document here, this is a NASA document looking at interplanetary transfers opportunities for Earth-Mars from 2026 onwards. You can see on the screen here they have a plot. Uh, this looked like a pork chop to someone, so hence the term pork chop plot became used. Uh, and you can see that in this case you want to have a low departure energy so that you use less food, fuel to transfer. And so what you have along the bottom axis is the departure date, the vertical axis is the arrival date. And for each combination, the plot provides the value of the particular transfer quantity, either departure energy, departure velocity, arrival velocity, and so on. So this has been added to Gravity Engine using a new class. So first we're in the minigames folder, in the pork chop folder. This particular scene is the Earth-Mars pork chop, and it's actually chosen to correspond to the plot that I just showed you in the NASA Mission Design Handbook in part as a way to validate that the right kind of things are going on and the right kind of numbers come out. So within this scene, the heavy lifting is done by this script called Lambert Porkchop. And this, in addition to having some references about from where to where, has information about over what departure and arrival intervals, and that can be done in a relative or in an absolute way. And then the number of calculations you want to perform, the number of increments along each axis. And then there's some display meshes which are used for the uh, representation of the particular value in a kind of color-based contour plot. So let's go ahead and run this scene. So in this case, we're talking about an Earth-Mars transfer in the 20, sorry, in the 2030 time frame, consistent with the NASA plot. So I've put a, two cameras in the scene. There's a little mini view down here. The other feature that comes with Lambert Porkchop is that the meshes are clickable. So you can click a particular point and you will get some details on the transfer. Also, you can press X to execute the maneuver in the scene down here, and it will show the actual transfer orbit. So you can see that in this case, this red region, we're getting a, uh, as you would have in the NASA contour plot, a close to the minimum value. And, and then over here, there are other minimum values with different times. In this case, the transfer time was 62. If we go over here, the transfer time is a little bit longer. And the reason for that is that it's a orbit where you go slightly past the orbit of Mars and then as you swoop back, you intercept Mars. Because there's an inclination difference between Earth and Mars between these two regions, there's a region where the transfer is extremely expensive. And if we click in there, we'll see the reason for that is the resulting orbit, because of the Lambert transfer needing to work in a plane between Earth, Mars, and the Sun, in this particular region where the inclination comes into play, the transfer orbit has very high inclination, which is, of course, hugely expensive. There are a number of versions of this pork chop plot provided in Gravity Engine. This one is in orbital units. There's a version that's in SI units. And then there are cases, for example, where if you wanted to look at a LEO orbit to a GEO orbit, We'll just go there and have a look. 
Uh, and in this case, because the Leo orbit is different inclination from the Geo orbit, the shape of the pork chop plot is really quite different. And so you can find out some interesting things by tinkering with the to and from orbits and their inclinations and sizes and seeing what kinds of plots result. And that's the first of the cool new features in Gravity Engine. The second major new feature is uh, in some regards, maybe kind of a uh, just a quality improvement. So if we go to the Gravity Engine, look in the inspector, and then actually I made a development scene to show off this issue with interpolation. So up until really 7.0, Gravity Engine has always run on fixed update and done its transform updates on fixed update. And as you may have noticed when you use rigid bodies, which also run on fixed updates, uh, you can end up with a little bit of jitter when your scene camera is only updating frames in the update mode. And one of the things they do in rigid body is they provide an interpolation mode so that if you wish to, you can interpolate so that the position of the body is projected to be the exact time that the update runs. And if you don't do this, then you get a little bit of a, under certain velocity and camera movement conditions, you get a certain amount of uh, jitter in the positioning of the body and it looks bad. So Gravity Engine now has the same facility. There's an update mode and you can, uh, if you set it to fixed update, that'll be the way it worked before release 7.0. The updates will occur on fixed updates. You then have the option to continue running the physics on fixed update, but interpolate the positions to the time of the graphics update, which is very much like what rigid body does. Or if you prefer to just run the physics every time that update runs, you can pick update. And then you'll run at the exact time. There is still a little bit of interpolation because quite often the physics integrator will overshoot very slightly and you'll need to back things up a little bit to match the exact update time and that's all taken care of in 7.0. So just as an example, if you turn this off, uh, what I have in this scene is a camera that's moving because of a camera script at a uniform velocity and the position of the camera is just the velocity times the update time. So the camera is sweeping smoothly from left to right there's a rigid body that's moving with a similar velocity, and there is a massive ship moving with a similar velocity. And when we press go, without the interpolation, you can see that the uh, round object, which is the end body, has got this problem of uh, jitter between the fixed update time and the update time. If we now go ahead and turn on fixed interpolate, everything moves smoothly to the right. So we have two objects moving to the right at the same speed as the camera, so there's no apparent motion. And likewise, if we do the physics updates on update, we get the same smooth motion. There are a couple of other little things in Gravity Engine 7.0, the orbit predictor can now display an optional orbit segment. Uh, there are also a couple of uh, important bug fixes, and you can check those out by looking in the readme file that ships with Gravity Engine 7.0. Hope you enjoyed the release, and thanks for listening.